G'day viewers, we're here today to have a look at the Mount Shasta line, which runs from Dunsmuir through the Sacramento River Valley through to Clement Falls up at the other end, which is a long way away. The route comes with the SD9E that you see sitting in front of us and the SD40T-2 that is behind it. The SD9E is used for local jobs like switching and local turns and the SD40-2 is used for the really long haul freight runs. Now just as a disclosure, I did get this game for free for the purposes of promoting it and reviewing it. Let's jump into the cab of the SD42 now and start getting set up. So there's a few things that you can manipulate around. You can move the wipers, you can turn some of the switches on and off, and you can open the windows should you desire to. Headlight-wise, we've got a standard headlight. The switches are a little bit difficult to get onto, I find, to find just the right spot. Sometimes you've got to move the cab around a bit. There we go. Okay, so that's put the light on out the front. And we've also got a gyro light, which we can turn on. So we'll do that. Now this one makes the gyro light gyrate, if you like. Almost got it. Let's let go there. Um, I found once this thing's on, I can't actually get it off again. You can just see it's gyrating there. And it's uh, having an effect out front. Sometimes I've also found the headlights in the trailing locos mysteriously come on, but that doesn't seem to always happen. Sound-wise, I think it's pretty good. Decent horn. It's got the bell. Let's get the brakes off. Into forwards. Looks like our brakes are coming off, and let's start grabbing some notches. Let's go up to notch three. Hopefully the rail driver won't grab another one by itself, as it sometimes does. Yeah, we seem to be moving off nicely now. So from my perspective, the sound's actually pretty good. I have seen some talk on forums and Steam that people, some people aren't that happy with it, but I think unless you're an absolute aficionado of this locomotive, you're actually going to be really happy with the sound on this one. There are some sound mod packs if you um, feel the need already. Anyway, the line runs through the very lush and uh, I have to say really nicely done. Sacramento River Valley and then we climb up after following the river for a while a double horseshoe which means you get to see the front and back of your train twice as you're going up there which is quite amazing the potential for rail fan shots is just huge as we progress through the route now I'm going to take you part way through because obviously we don't want this to go on forever now, the route does come with a heap of rolling stock as well as those locos. You get box cars, uh, bulkhead flat cars for sawn lumber or pipes. I've seen both in loads. Covered hopper, flat car, tank car, trailer on flat car, and a wood chip car. Now, as we climb up through the double horseshoe... As you climb up through the double horseshoe, you get to see your train at twice. As you go through there, you can sit in the loco and you can see the tail end come around. We also climb 5,063 feet up into the foothills of Mount Shasta, which is roughly 1,543 metres. It's a pretty steady 2% climb, which is uh, quite meaty. Climbing up is pretty straightforward. You just grab enough notches and off you go. Coming down, 
is a little bit more interesting. Now, the scenarios have multiple break modes. There's an easy one and a harder one that you can choose from. And I have to say this route has absolutely loads of railfan potential. There's sightings and industries all over the place for you to make your own scenarios and upload them to workshop. Or if that's not your thing, perhaps subscribe to other people who are doing it. Now, there are a few niggles. You're seeing one of them there with the crossing opening up while the train's still there. The route runs really well. It drives quite well. <laughs> there goes that crossing again. And I, I actually think it's quite a lot of fun. So we'll see you again just a little bit up the river at the next picturesque spot. There's a total of seven scenarios on the route, four for the SD40T2, and they are long haul scenarios, and there are three for the SD9E, which are shunting, there's a puzzle, and local turn. Here we are at the first horseshoe where the train passes itself, essentially, as we crawl up grade at roughly 20 miles an hour in notch 8, which gives you an idea of just how steep and how hard going this actually is. Now, the distant scenery suffers the same lodding feature that we uh, are quite used to in this game, so... No one's going to worry about it too much, I don't think. One interesting thing with the lodding is you'll notice that the boxcars are open until they get close enough that the doors draw in. It's a little bit weird, but eh, it's not actually the route, it's the core game. So as we come around this horseshoe, you actually see a lot of the rolling stock that we talked about earlier. But I'll stay quiet now just so you can enjoy the sound of the train coming up the hill.
Here we are at the top of the second horseshoe for the uh, meat of this other train that's been patiently waiting. You can see Mount Shasta in the background there, so we've still got more climbing to do because we get quite close to that mountain. And just to give you an idea, we're now up in what is essentially close to the snow line. And we came from down there, down in the valley. So we came through this level and the one below it. So that's quite an extreme climb for a railway to manage. Up here at Andesite, there's a lonely green tank car, and apparently it's used by the US Forest Service for storing water for firefighting purposes. There's no plaque or anything on it, but, you know, I googled it. So here we are in the high country at Andesite. It's the final stop for this scenario. And time for the final word. So operationally, this route's great. It's got some really good scenarios that are fun and enjoyable to play. It's got great rail fan possibilities like this one all over the place. There's huge potential for workshop scenarios. The uh, signalling works really well. You can see the little works train happily following us up the hill. The scenery is probably good through to excellent. So areas like this, I think, are excellent, really nice. Um, down in the valley, it's really, really nice. There's a few spots where it's a little bit niggly. There's some roads and things that have some issues, but along the rail corridor, it's really, really good. So it's a positive yes from me for this one. Definitely one worth buying. Let me just put on some more brakes so this actually stops and doesn't spad. Um, I know I didn't pay for it, so take it with a grain of salt if you like, but I have to say if I had I'd paid for this one, I'd be really happy with it. So definitely a recommendation from me to um, go out and get it because it's a good one. See you later. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. I always like to get your feedback in the form of likes and comments because they help me understand what you want. Give the channel a subscribe and click on the tinkly things so you don't miss out on any new stuff. And thanks for your ongoing support. And please, be safe out there.